all things not being the same, our GTA project, or I should say our GTA uh, tribute car, is uh, always looking at the edge of advancement. Instead of us having a thousand relays in the engine bay and uh, underneath the dash and very difficult places to service things, um, the owner of the car came up with the idea of running an ECU. Now before you panic and flip out and think ECUs are bad things, this is where it gets about as simple as it can be. This right here is called the Leash Pro Street. This is the cover for it. Effectively, it's so much more than your regular fuse block that you have in your car. All the relays you would ever need are in here, plus it's expandable to additional 12 additional um, uh, uh, plugins. Okay, so this is kind of cool because if you ever wanted to have hazard lights in your car, now you can do it fairly simply. If you ever wanted to expand on your car and not tax your current fuse block, now you can do it really simply because you have the expansion capabilities in this unit. Uh, meaning, like if you wanted to put in stereos or GPS or a functional lighter um, power supply for your computers, whatever, you can now do it and have a fairly reasonable way of doing it without wearing out your current older fuse block. Now, we're putting this in the trunk space that we made because there is no rear seat in this car. It's going to be a platform um, with storage. Now, the reason we did that is because there's going to be stereo lights back there. There's going to be the actual car battery back there and this. So all the wiring is coming from basically behind the driver's seat. Now, when you add that kind of length to the current wiring, you have to consider whether or not you would upsize the wiring. We're running our own wiring for this car because this is a very complex car at this point with its uh, air conditioning and all electronic controls going in, into it with the really trick racing dash that we uh, made for it. There's a ton of electrical that was not a part of the original car. Quite honestly, you, if you're not really sure what the electrical conditioning of the, of the wiring is right now, this isn't so much a bad idea. Um, insulation degradation is a very fancy word for wiring that starts to break down. Um, any given car of 30, 40, 50 years in, in stature is going to have some degree of insulation degradation. Connectors get weak. When they get weak, the wires get hot. When wires get hot, they start to cook. That's insulation degradation. Anyhow, so we are running our own wiring and we have to upsize it in some places because, for example, the headlights in this car are going to be HID uh, bulbs inside of classic Corello mule stock headlights. So we're taking advantage of the opportunity to upsize wiring. Normally in your car, that probably would have been somewhere in the area of maybe 14, 16 gauge wire, but we're going to run it in a true, pure 14 gauge. Um, that's going to give us plenty of power to fuel those lights with all the energy they need. Um, in conjunction, again, with everything being ran to the back, the additional length typically will upsize the wire needs. The longer the wire, typically the larger the wire needs to get for even the most basic jobs. Um, the one real cool thing that we really do like about this system is it has trouble lights on it. So if there's something that is at fault, it's going to tell you. So this is about as simple as it gets and it has every conceivable plug-in you need. There's plenty of battery hot and ignition hot uh, taps. Plus, you're able to run your turn signal, no more relays underneath the dash and in the engine bay. You're able to run your, uh, you know, you name it, your hazard lights, uh, high beams, low beams, the ignition, everything is self-contained to this unit. So this is a great little unit. These are relatively cheap, too. Uh, you can find these online for less than 175 bucks. Just a cool thing we're doing. Okay, so one of the beauties about running your own wiring is you get to use a real high quality wire. And you get to solder the ends and make this where it's going to last forever. And what you see me doing is I have all the wiring for the lights. This is just the headlights and the turn signals that's inside of here. So it's been wrapped in tape and now I'm using this expanded cord protection. And this is real heavy, thick plastic. Because we're running this to the inside of the fender instead of inside the engine bay to keep the engine bay fairly clean looking, this needs to be very well protected against you know rocks and debris coming off the tires. 
So this stuff right here, what's nice about it is, is it starts to firm up once you've run it. You see how you can literally shape this any way you want to. Um, it just gives it a nice professional look when it's all said and done. One of the many upgrades we're doing on this car is we're switching all of these bulbs and possibly these bulbs to a more advanced bulb. We're switching over to LEDs, wide variety of LEDs. What's cool about this is, is we can have an orange LED for turn signals. We can have a high visibility LED for parking lights. And we can have LEDs that are already red to improve the brake and the turn signal illumination. It requires a whole lot less electricity to drive these and they're exceptionally brighter than the original bulb. Here's the tail light assembly. It is past it. It's cracked. It's weathered. It's dirty. It's, um, well, it's just past it. Here's the new LED assembly we're going to use in the bottom. Obviously, because he's coming down at a right angle, this would be ineffective. But we really want to use these. And it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to buy these brand new just to tear them up in order to fit these. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to clean these up, these old guys. We're going to glue them up. We're going to use a special bonding agent to basically kind of create a new layer of plastic to them. We're going to paint this interior highly reflective. The highly reflective material is kind of pointless to a degree because none of this is backlighting to this to refract back out. But nonetheless, we're going to do it anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the original cradles, which are in good working order, and we're going to relocate them to the middle of each one of the dimplings. That way, this, which goes right here, and these, which go up here, will be casting the light directly out. Some of you might be going, what? But we want to use these LEDs for all the right reasons. They're highly, highly illuminating, which makes your, uh, whoever's behind you, very aware of where you're at. Two, they're low on util or electrical consumption. But three, you'll never have to change them again. They last forever. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna clean these up, plastic weld them, Relocate the cradles and uh, make them better than new. Okay, what we got here is a special plastic bonding adhesive. What I'm doing is because we relocated the, how the lights will be sitting in the cradles on the rear of this for those cool LED lights, we need to be able to fuse the cradle so they'll be in there permanently. So what you have to do when you're using a special plastic bonding product is you have to bleed off a little bit first so the panel mixes the two together. So now that I have that in there, I don't need a whole lot. This stuff sets up fairly quickly so you want to do this very fast. This is what it looks like. Alright, so now, now that I have them nestled in there, I have the areas taped off on the inside, now it's like to hold the few of the, uh, the bowl cradles in place. But now, before this stuff starts to harden up, and it'll harden up quickly, smooth it out a little bit. It's almost safe enough to consider this like a plastic welding product. Because once it hardens up, not moving. I got a little area I need to get more in. And once this dries, we're going to 
spray this highly reflective chrome paint. And these will last forever. You're saving an old pair of tail lights like I am. This is a good opportunity to use this to fix up any imperfections that are in it. A little itty bitty crack right here that I'm going to fix fine here. Alright, so now I need to smooth out the other one and that'll be it. There we go. Now, once these are uh, good and dry, I'll take the tape off the back and we'll weld up the back sides as well. Now you can see what I was saying before about using a brand new set of tail lights doesn't make a whole lot of sense because you're going to ruin them anyway. So what I did was I took the original cradles which were on a right angle and I bent the tabs back. So we will solder a wire in between these two to make a common ground. Plus have a wire coming off of here with the terminal. That way I can plug in my ground into these and the bases are well done. Okay, so the lights are going here. Now because these are LEDs that are forward casting, it's not really necessary to chrome out this area. It's just that anything that gets trapped by the red lens is going to back reflect onto the surface. So if I don't want that light to have a very intense localized beam, I need to chrome this entire thing out so when it hits through the reflective lens and bounces back in, it'll illuminate the whole light. And you'll see how much better these are than the original bulb style lights. This is going to illuminate with a high intensity low electrical electrical consumption in the last forever these LED lights don't burn out so theoretically once we seal these up put them on this should be the last time you ever have to open them up okay so now you can see I got my highly reflective paint on the front my plastic welding process is done and these are relocated so the only thing I'm gonna do from here is I'm going to solder a ground wire in between and solder a terminal out so I can ground these but other than that, these would be ready for operation. And again, I, I would assume at this point you quite understand why I wouldn't bother using brand new ones because if I'm just going to absolutely destroy them by drilling through them and relocating the connectors, it would be no point to buy the expensive replacements for these. So a, a good representing used pair is the ideal way to go. All right, but these are rock solid now, highly reflective paint. There's never really been a reflective paint in there. There was always this, uh, foiling that was in there that wasn't all that bright in the first place. And, and quite honestly, I'm not really sure that we even need the reflective properties other than the fact that when the LEDs go up against the red light and that refraction of light going back, it's gonna help illuminate the whole surface. Later on day, I'll wire this in, you'll see what I'm talking about. And I said it before and I'll say it again. The alpha wiring was actually really good. It's, it's a high quality wiring. Um, but we're taking advantage of the fact that we're starting our own wiring program on this. So we're grounding everything individually onto a common uh, terminal. The reason we're doing that is it makes it a very high quality uh, conditioning voltage. Um, but we're also soldering all the ends. I'm going to be putting a spade connector on this, but I'm soldering this as to never allow these lines to fray. This way, this has longevity. This will last a very long time this way. So now it's time to start wiring them in and getting them to work. Next. Next. Press and hold that last one. Okay, so what you're seeing is is LED lights. Mind you, you'll never have to go back and fix ever again. You can see that they're far more intense than the original light. It's a good safety measure, low electrical uh, consumption, and it's a very clean look.